Hey y'all, I'm Nafisa with CoinOp TV. We are at Gallery 1988 checking out I Am 8-Bit. It's the closing night, so we're gonna go talk to some of the artists and see what inspired them to do such awesome artwork based on the games you and I know and love. So come on, let's go meet them. Okay, we found Tony Mora, and he's um, doing some art pieces with Punch-Out! Look at that, wasn't that tough? Yes. That so tough. Okay, Tony and I have something in common that we grew up watching other people play Punch-Out! Yeah, I, I used to go to the Redondo Beach Arcade and like the greatest game there was Punch-Out! And I was just like, wow, I had two screens, I was just like amazed by it. Right. So, but I didn't have, I was just like a little kid, so I didn't have the 50 cents to play. Right. So, I just watched other people play. Yeah. But you know, I, I always dreamed of like playing it, and, and then finally when it came out for the Nintendo system, I was like, wow, I can actually start playing it now. It's a dream come true. See, now, that's the difference between us and kids today, is that they have their little home version, they can play anytime they want, for free, like they don't have to bug their parents for money, go to 7-Eleven, cash it out for quarters. Yeah, yeah, it's like, I like, I've had like every version, I like have it on the PC, the emulated versions, and on the Xbox. It's like, I just love, the, the, the whole thing about the timing, just the characters, it was just so cartoony because I love cartoons and I work in animation. Uh, tell me about the piece. It's Pac-Man in hospice? Yeah, Pac-Man in hospice. Like, he's getting ready to die. He's not dead yet, but he's pretty old. Because so. it takes a lot to run around that little game board, yeah. picking up the little fruit pieces. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Oh, it does. Yeah. Yeah, he's tired. <laughs> So now, where, it's not like an average idea. Like, I never thought of this when I was playing Pac-Man. So how did you come up with the idea? Actually, like, the word hospice is going around a lot in my family because my grandpa is kind of getting older and stuff like that. So I kind of just pass it along to this, try to, <laughs> try to make a funny, light joke out of it for some reason. I don't know why. But uh, I figured, what would Pac-Man look like if he was this old? I mean, we've all grown up. Yeah. And, like, the game was a long time ago. So what has he been doing while we've been growing up? So he's been getting older, and all the other video game characters have been getting older too, going through their own adventures. Like I have Dig Dug in here, he's got a patch over his eye and a hook for a hand. So apparently he got in a fight with some more monsters and yeah. didn't do so well. So it's like a lot of stuff went on with these guys while we were growing up. Oh. So I just kind of take a picture, a snapshot of See, them all getting For all of us that were wondering what happened to Pac-Man, and everyone was thinking, oh, he got married to Miss Pac-Man, and yeah. they lived happily ever after. No. I think she passed before he did, because she's not even in the picture. So sad story. It is sad. It is sad. Do, have you played Pac-Man lately? Yeah. Me and my mom always play every really? time I go to visit. Are you still good? Oh, she always beats me. Now, you have a few pieces here, and I asked you which one is your favorite, and you said Rampage. Like, no hesitation whatsoever. Uh -huh. So, what is it about Rampage? Was it, like, your favorite game when yeah. you were younger? Yeah, it was my all-time favorite arcade game. Okay. So, I decided, uh, well, this is the closing show, and um, I was asked to do a piece for the closing show. And I realized nobody did Rampage, and I was just so amazed because it was my favorite arcade game. So, uh, so I jumped on it, and yeah. I did it. Um, so yeah. Okay. So now, what do you think is better? Now, there's all kinds of new stuff coming out here, and they they're like lifelike, and you can do stuff with your you know your eyeballs and your feet, and you can get like all involved with it. But what do you think is better? Like the games we grew up with? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the little that I do remember about Luigi, he didn't look like this. So what has happened to him since we saw him last? I don't know, I was just, I was just kind of thinking of the game like in real terms, you know, like as if he was to really run through that world yeah. and do all that, you know, fight against all those creatures and finally beat the game. Like I, the painting is, it's actually kind of like a self-portrait. I mean, I'm not like an Italian plumber that runs through <laughs> sewage pipes or anything like that, you know, but it was kind of like, you know, since I was a kid, like I would always play Super Mario Brothers and everybody else would always want to be Mario. They'd right. want to be the first player, you know. Yeah. I'd always get stuck with the second player, you know, but then they would lose and I'd beat the game. So nice. it was kind of like a, you know, Because be you weren't a... playing your mom, that's why you won. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, so this is like the real interpretation of if you had just run through, yeah. this is how you would come out looking? Yeah, well, it's, it's actually, it's kind of like my story about like, you know, me coming from a small town up north, Northern California, and coming to Hollywood, you know what I mean? Yeah. And when everybody else said I couldn't do it, you know, that's everybody so else said cool. I couldn't make it. You know. Awesome. Super Mario Brothers. Mm -hmm. Favorite game? The favorite game of mine. Since when? Um, ever since I can remember. Ever since the first Nintendo came out. Really? Yeah. So that was your system, Nintendo? Yeah, that and the Japanese edition, which was called Super Famicom. Okay. 
Yeah. But it was the same thing? It was the same thing, but it was kind of a little more cooler because I guess international packaging oh, and everything okay. was always so co much cooler. You know what I mean? So are you from here in um, California? Or? Originally, I was from San Francisco. Okay. Um, but I moved down here like five or six years ago and um, basically started my art career because um, I found it more um, opportunities were more uh, abroad. Like I could find like jobs, but I could also get into a lot of galleries that accepted my work. Now that we're all grown up, do you ever have those sleepless nights where you just play and play and play and you get glassy eyed? Yeah, I, once in a great while I'll do that. I mean, I'm married. And I have a house, and it's you know my friends are like, how do you do it? I'm like, you know, you pick your times when to do it, cause you know you can't be playing all night when you get home from work. You gotta right. spend some time with your wife. Yeah, the missus doesn't get mad. Uh, she, I mean, she, she's used to it. Okay. I mean, you know, it's just like she. This is the way it was before, and I'm not gonna change. You know, it's just like it's it's a part of my life. I mean, I grew up. I was a little kid playing games. Yeah. I mean, I loved it, you know, and I still do. Now, did you do this in school? Like, were you a big arty person? Were you always doodling and stuff? I was always doodling. I've been drawing since I was like three, so it's pretty much growing up. I was a kid doodling, drawing everything for everybody in the class, and then I went on to school, took art, got into illustration, and graduated with a, in a studio art um, <laughs> degree, but still always art, always drawing. You know what's cool about that? Tell me this. Now, if you were doodling all the time, did you get in trouble like oh, by teachers time. and stuff? All the time. Drawing on the tables, drawing on everything I shouldn't be drawing on. Yeah. So yeah, I got in trouble. You know what's that awesome? Now tell your teachers like, yeah, I'm making a living now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, which system did you play? Uh, Nintendo mostly, yeah. Remember when we had like the junky, like two buttons and you almost <laughs> broke it, like pulling so hard on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the funnest part. That is the funnest part. Don't you think kids now are spoiled? They have too many buttons and too many. It's so easy now. Yeah, pretty soon it's you won't even be able to use your hands to play video games anymore. Either. You just think about it. Yeah, pretty much. This is this is pretty much basically the game. I mean, you you, you basically beat up buildings with your bare hands and get points by destroying a city. Yeah. <laughs> so funny because you just seem so so nice and polite <laughs> so now this piece is it more of a, a theme piece for you or you usually work in like games well that's a funny question because like when I first got hit up with from 1988 and John Gibson um, it was kind of like wow um, you kind of made my dreams come true because ever since I was little I always wanted to interpret um, or have my interpretation of Super Mario Brothers okay. And um, basically the whole piece is basically a nightmare I had when I was a, a very, very young child. Yeah, it was kind of weird. It was like uh, me, I was in the Super Mario World and um, basically I saw a one-up mushroom, like those little mushroom dudes that like you always see around. And I took a bite out of it and I started hallucinating. All of a sudden I saw all these ghosts, which are these guys started chasing after me and I mean imagine like the Super Mario Brothers world but yeah. like in real life I'll like seeing right. actual colors and all these vibrant things going on which was kind of scary but very very exciting as a little kid yeah. and so that always stuck with me and it was to this day it's like one of my most vivid dreams you know what I mean and so I'm very very I feel very privileged and it's very fate that I actually got to do yeah. this show yeah sorry I feel like doing like little movements <laughs> you should have got that, the little head bobbing. I like to kind of sugarcoat very, very strong and almost personal messages. Right. Because I feel like it's a very good way to digest strong topics is as if you were to portray it in very vibrant colors and very familiar shapes and um, very cute objects, but then make them be the narrative of a very, very, very strong or personal message, which I find intriguing and I like to interpret it. So stuff great. like that. So that's like actually a scene from your nightmare. Yes, it is actually. Okay. See, very, very yeah, You look at it, it looks so sweet and innocent. <laughs> yeah, I think that's why um, I feel like to me it turned out very well because I was so excited and so passionate about it that like I literally didn't like take my brush off the board. I was right. kind of just one night kind of thing. And, okay, so you said you work in animation. Yeah. So this is like the perfect like yeah. outlet for it kind of goes in hand in hand it, it, it like the characters remind me of Popeye I really like the old Flesher cartoons and a lot of the characters have that look the line the body kind of like you know Bluto and Bruto they just have the you know really muscular bodies so I don't know it just kind of I just like it right. you know and you get to punch people yeah. <laughs> it's not where 
rocket science. Yeah. So you're in animation, but you're doing this. Was this like a theme piece for you, or you try yeah. to stay in the realm? Actually, of I did one piece, which was the King Hippo, because he was like my, he was like the hardest character, because yeah. I could not figure out how to beat him. So it's like he's always been in my head. Do you still play? Um, yes, and the only thing I play is this. Really? <laughs> Up to Super Mario 3. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do so you have uh, an arcade like, that you no, go through? No, no. I really just have the old school oh, Nintendo, right. and like, I just keep it in good condition. I still, you know, blow on the cartridges. <laughs> well, thanks for stopping by, you guys. We had so much fun here. Thanks to John Gibson down at Gallery 1988 and all of the fabulous artists that we just got to know. Thanks for stopping by. I'm Nafisa DeFlorius. You've been watching Coin Op TV.